Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be going ahead and painting our British Paras for our Market Garden project. Uh, I've, get, I've got started already on these guys. I primed them with the Rust-Oleum Camo Khaki, uh, so they're already primed a khaki color. And then I went ahead and hit them all up with the medium flesh tone from Vallejo. Those are already uh, hit up all their flesh tone. And then uh, w the next color we're gonna use is English Uniform. We're gonna use this English Uniform. It's kind of a, a kind of a mid-range brown. Uh, it's, it's a perfect color for their trousers, right? So their trousers are gonna be uh, painted up with the English uniform. I've already got started. Let's go ahead and keep working on these. We're gonna go ahead and use a round two from Summit, Princeton Summit. All right, now remember when you're painting uh, the pants, it's okay if you get it a little bit on the gaiters because you're going to be painting the gaiters again later. And it's actually, to be honest, it's okay to get some of this brown on the smock as well because you are going to be making the smock a camouflage and it's okay to have a little bit of brown on there. But I am trying to avoid it because this is not the brown I want on my smock, but it, it can go on your smock. That's not a problem. All right, let's continue on. And uh, when I get done with the pants, I'll be right back. All right, now that we got the trousers done, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the boots, not the gaiters, but just the bottom parts of the boots. And we're gonna use leather brown. This leather is a dark leather. It's a almost black. You can kind of see it right there. Uh, now, you could get away with painting their boots black. You could get away with painting their boots a lighter red brown if you want uh, but from my research looking at historical uniforms and museums I'm noticing that leather brown is a good balance this is the best color for even the Germans really the Germans and the British boots leather brown okay we're gonna continue using the larger brush I'm using a 3-0 and you get the bottom of the boots and the sides of the boots and it's okay if you get it on the gaiter remember the gaiter is going to be painted later it's also okay if you get it onto the base because the base is going to be covered with basing materials flock and the like so don't worry about that. It's that simple. Move on to the next. And when I get them all done, I'll be right back. All right, now part of my paratrooper group is actually going to, I, I built them as Polish. So uh, we're going to use dark blue gray on their beret. Uh, there was a couple of different Polish independent units. Uh, one actually wore the same beret as the Paris, as the uh, sixth Paris, but the first Paris Polish brigade actually had like gray berets. And I think uh, it transitioned through the era, through the time, I think they universally went towards a green beret later, but uh, during Market Garden, the first para had gray. And so one of these uh, squads that I've got going on, I have 
as Polish, and I'm using the dark blue-gray. And the reason why I jumped to the far end of the model is while the boots are drying and the pants are drying, it gives me time to let them dry so I could do the gaiters later. Just like that. All right, let me go ahead and finish that and uh, finish the rest of the Polish berets, and then I'll be right back. All right, so the next color, I'm still sticking with the berets. I'm gonna use a flat red. Uh, it's not maroon, it's gonna be more of a red beret. And uh, the, remember, I'm gonna be washing all these guys with a dark wash, and it's gonna bring this red down a little bit. Uh, but I'm, but I'm using kind of a darker red, and flat red came out to be a fairly dark red. <clears throat> and I have berets scattered randomly throughout the entire unit that I'm doing. So I just grab one of the guys with the beret, and we paint the beret. I personally love the airborne units that have guys running around with berets. It really, I think it makes that unit look really unique and powerful. All right, a couple of berets like that. And let me go ahead and finish the red berets, and then I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Now, we, I went ahead and did the red berets, and I did the Polish gray berets. And now we're going to do the smocks. Uh, the smocks are three colors. They're the tan color, right, the khaki tan, and then they're also a brown and it's a reddish brown, and then they're a really dark green. We're gonna use the wood brown because it's a good dark red brown. And then we're gonna use olive green, uh, camouflage olive green. And then because I want the smock to be primarily brown uh, with some tan and some green in it, we're going to do the green on top of the tan, and then we're going to go later at the end and use the brown on top of the green and everything else. So you prime it the tan, and we're going to paint it green. It's like I'm just I'm just going to randomly put dots and splotches. They're going to be irregular shapes. They're going to be lines. There's going to be squares or triangles. I'm basically just going to paint willy nilly on these models uh, you know just large spots and it doesn't matter if I get it on the gear or not because I'm going to be painting the gear afterwards And you can kind of see about how far apart I'm putting the spots and about how big that I'm making the spots. Okay, we're going to do this on a couple of different models just so you can kind of get a good idea. Some spots can be bigger than others. It's perfectly fine. Don't forget to get the inside of the arms and 
the chest. And come at it from all different angles so that you can see all the different exposed parts of the smock. What do they call the smock? The Denison smock? Okay. So you get dots all over the guy. Alright, well, let me get dots all over this guy. And you notice how I'm making them oblong, not, uh, like oval and not circular. Coming at it with a flat brush, like I take my brush at an angle like this instead of like this, so that you can get unusual shapes depending on how you press your brush up against your model. You can even you can even uh, apply the paint and then drag. Uh, one, one reason why you might do that, because there was um, a large variety of camouflage patterns on the Denison smock. It was in production by, I believe, a number of different fabric uh, makers made the camouflage fabric and then when it was assembled not all the fabric was exactly the same which I guess you don't want that you don't want it to be all exactly the same because you know but if one camouflage pattern was believed to be better than another you know it just depends This is not a very complicated process, it's just time consuming, but it is fairly easy. Green spots all over the guy. All right, well, let me put green spots on all these models, and I'll be right back. All right, so now the next color we're going to use is wood brown on the smocks. All right, now again, what we're going to do is we're going to put dots. I'm going to try to cover mostly the khaki and not the green, but I do want to overlay a little bit of the green, so I am going to kind of lay it next to the green like that. And then there and there basically we're going to put as many drops of brown as we have green maybe even a little more and we're going to allow it to touch the green and overlap the green as well all right let me keep going And I'm making the brown dots bigger than the green ones. Again, I'm saying that I want my camel pattern to be primarily brown. But it's going to have khaki and green underneath. And again, it's okay to get it on top of straps or boxes or belts or any harnesses or anything like that because you're going to go back later and paint those separately anyway.
All right, so you get kind of a brown and green mix with khaki underneath. It's a little glossy right now because the paint's wet. But let's come back and take a look at it as soon as I get them all done. We'll be right back in just a second. All right, now the next color we're going to use is Tamaya's Olive Drab. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on their, uh, their helmets. Simple, easy peasy, just coat the helmet. Now, these helmets have nets on them. Just go ahead and paint the whole thing. And then they also have some burlap straps tied to the nets as camouflage. And we'll paint those burlap straps later. There you go. I just paint the helmets and let me go ahead and finish up all the helmets and I'll be right back. All right, guys. Now the next step we're going to do is <clears throat> we're actually going to do some pouches, some gaiters, some backpacks, some straps, basically everything that is like a canvas or a, or a pouchy type style. We're going to go ahead and paint khaki. All right, so let's go ahead and I got some khaki in here. It's pretty thick. I might add some water to it. But basically, the pouch. Now I sprayed it khaki, remember? But it's a little bit off from the brush on khaki. And the brush on will actually cover any overpainting that I might have done with the camouflage pattern on the smock. Specifically pouches and belts. Right, so it's kind of very subtle there and then we'll also do that on the gaiters so the gaiters and the straps and the belts didn't really need to be painted at all but all I was doing is technically I was going through and fixing any of the overpaint from the trousers or the boots and I was fixing any overpaint from the camouflage pattern plus I was painting the belt okay let's do that one more time on this guy
Yeah, it's very subtle changes. All right, once I get all the khaki on, I'll be right back. All right, now we're gonna <clears throat> also continue on, continuing with the khaki. Um, uh, the, on their camouflage helmets, they've got these little burlap straps. And what I need to do is touch up on some of those. So let's go ahead and hit some of that khaki again. And then we look at the straps on the helmet. Gotta locate them because they're all over the place. Not the netting, just the strap, just the uh, pieces that were tied into the netting. Kind of like that. All right, let me go ahead and uh, do another one. There you go, a little bit more. All right, now let me go ahead and finish up all the camo netting on all the helmets, and then I'll be right back. All right, so the next color we're gonna use is the bazooka green. And believe it or not, I'm not gonna use it on any bazooka, but I am gonna use it on the Piat. Okay, and you can kind of see how that is not an extremely dark green, but it is just almost like an olive drab, but it's not. It's just a, just like a military green. Now with that same green, I do have this guy here that's packing a radio. The first part of the radio is a metal radio. The second part of this radio, the it's like a... It's like a, a sleeve or a, a, what do you call it? Like a, a cowling that's kind of concealing the knobs and things like that that are hidden beneath the radio. I'm painting that with the bazooka green as well because it'll give you a contrasting color. It'll be like a, because I painted the radio completely with olive drab, the Tamaya olive drab. Uh, and now I'm going back over the cowling 
with this bazooka green, which is a little bit lighter, and it'll it'll give the two a definitive uh, what do you call it contrast. But you can see it's not completely 100% like a different color, but it is it is a lot lighter. Maybe not a lot lighter, but it just basically gives you that two-tone. Now I'm also going to paint that on his headset. Same thing, bazooka green. Careful not to get it on your red. Let's go ahead and cover or paint the little handset that he's using to speak to his buddies. There you go. One additional thing I want to uh, color are the rocket case for the Piat. So we got that painted as well. All right, now the next color we're going to be using is the Folk Art Burnt Sienna. As you know, I use Burnt Sienna for most of my rifle stocks, butts, uh, anything like that. So let's grab one of our men with a rifle.
Okay, so we got that rifle. Now let's see if there's, uh, that's a Polish guy, right? Now we're going to take a look at things like the Bren gun, right? Well, the Bren gun's not completely covered by wood. The stock is in the back is wood. That's really the only thing that's wood on the Brenda. Okay, the next color we're going to use is Gun Metal Gray. All right, and I did want to let you know that off camera, I did use a U.S. uniform uh, from Model Color on their ponchos inside their backpacks. O off camera, I went ahead and painted those. And then uh, I also used this uh, pale brown, this German camouflage pale brown to do the let's see if I can find one here we go uh, their little cups they have these cups on the back of their uh, rucks and uh, those cups are like a painted metal so uh, they're actually painted brown so I went ahead and used the German camouflage pale brown on those and then uh, as I was advertising before, I used khaki webbing uh, for the slings of their weapons and also, whoops, for their slings on their weapons and also like the canvas chin straps and then little buckles on the, the backpacks and butt packs and uh, I highlighted the ropes that they wear around their bodies. That was done with the khaki webbing. Now, some things that uh, I hit up with khaki webbing also was 
this guy, he's the medic. I, his medical bag here is khaki webbing and his another bag that he's carrying on his back here is khaki webbing. And then of course, some of the strappage is khaki webbing. You know, and you got your Piat sling, also khaki webbing. Yeah, and then like backpack straps. Yeah, so I did all that off camera. All right, some of you know that when I paint ammo or anything, I like to use gold. Like this is pure gold. I'm going to use that on the feed belt here. That's pretty much all I'm going to use it on. That and maybe a horn. I'm going to put a very small drop. Very small drop of gold. Very small pot of gold, yeah. Because gold with a really strong wash on top of it looks kind of brassy. If I didn't put a wash on it, like if I painted black first and then planned on using like gold as highlights and, or as the final coat, then of course it would look gold. But because I'm going to be putting a wash on it, it's going to bring that color down and it's going to look almost like brass. All right, so we got the gold belt going in there. Now there's this model here. He's got a horn that he's blowing. Um, he could be simulated as frost, but there are a number of unit commanders that use the horn. There's even a special character that organized all of his squad leaders to have horns because he didn't trust the radios at Market Garden, which was good because they failed him. And then uh, he had a whole bunch of like bugle calls that he could use and was able to control his troops uh, very well. Okay, now there's a shell here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint it gold uh, from about the two-thirds part back as the brass shell casing. And then that front part, I'm going to paint like a really dark OD green. There we go. All right, I think that's all there is that's got any kind of golden brass color to it. A little bit like, a little bit like that. All right, now another color I'm going to use is this is a model master or a poly S, uh, but it's, it's the model master acrylics, olive drab. Uh, remember how I've been using uh, Tamaya olive drab, and you can see the difference in the colors. Uh, this olive drab I like to use on fabric that's supposed to be olive drab. And I like to use this olive drab on anything metal that's olive drab. So like helmets or bazookas or things like that. Uh, Jeeps and tanks would be this olive drab. Where like canvas tops or uh, bags or uh, sandbags. And that's what I'm going to do on this guy right here. He's got some sandbags under here and I think they need to be all of drab. And I went with the Paulia solid drab because it's a light green. Like I use this color for like truck tops, truck uh, canvas tops, you know. 
like the deuce and a half or uh, any other kind of camo netting I might use this color Yeah, a lot of the uh, soldiers would use sandbags on their tripods to kind of hold them down so that they wouldn't shake or rattle around when they were being fired. I think I need to repaint this cowling up here. It's part of the radiator. Uh, body yeah it was, for some reason it was just looking very dark like it was and I think this is like fabric anyway it's a liquid cooled barrel Should I say water cooled? All right. I think that looks good. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to let a lot of this dry and then we'll come back with the next step. All right, guys. Now, the next step on my British paratroopers is to apply a wash. Now, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use the quick shade strong tone and uh, I'm going to do a two to one mixture. So that means I'm going to put about 30 drops of water. I mean, sorry, 30 drops of quick shade. Let's go ahead and do that. 30 drops of the quick shade. And that means I'm going to put 15 drops of water. That gives me a two to one ratio of shade to water. We're going to stir it up. And then we're going to apply it to these models. Okay, now when we apply it to the model, you want to make sure you cover every piece of the model. The beret, the hands, the arms, the pack, specifically the pack, and the pants, and all the ammo pouches, and his weapon, right? You want to make sure that he is completely covered. Now we're going to let that set and dry. Let's go ahead and just grab another model, like this guy right here. And we would take him and we would start at the top and we'd work our way down, making sure I got his pack covered, making sure I got his smock covered, make sure I got his helmet, his chest, his face, his weapon, his sling. See, and I'm just working my way down trying not to overdo it and put so much um, wash that it disguises all of the details, but I want enough wash that it enhances all of the details. So you got to put enough wash to cover the entire model. Okay, and then I'm going to take this guy, set him down, let him dry. All right, so let me do all these models, and when I've got them all finished, and then they're dried, we'll come back for the next step. All right, I went ahead and finished up the figures. I went ahead and 
put the gravel on the bases and then I went ahead and actually applied the flock to the bases and now we can actually pull these up and take a closer look at what I actually did with my British. I have all my infantry squads are six men. That way if I wanted to play with a 12 man I just combined two squads or if I want to have multiple six-man squads. That's the way I organized it. These two squads there are going to be the Polish, and these are the British, and this would have been the 30 plastic infantry that came on the sprues. We've got our uh, six-pounder anti-tank with crew. We have our two snipers, which I'll use one as a sniper and one as his assistant. We got a medium machine gun, a Vickers medium machine gun. We have a couple of officers out of the uh, command pack. We have a medic out of the command pack. We even have a radio man here that I put in the squad to take one of those plastic pieces and make a Piat gunner right there. And then and we also have our limited edition figure that I threw in there. Uh, that's to get me his loader. Yeah, by adding that limited edition figure to the Polish, it actually allowed me to get a second gunner for the Panzer, uh, for the Piat, which actually, this worked out pretty good. So, uh, we've got five six-man squads, six-pounder, sniper, machine gun, medic, Piat, and then I've got my lieutenant and my major and or you know or, or captain or however you want to do it or I could say like I got two platoons I got a platoon there and I've got a platoon there so I could play it out with as if I had two platoons uh, that would be another way for me to get another piot gunner if I decide to split it up into two platoons uh, but just for this case this is how we're doing it right now all right, let's get some close-up views so you can see the finished paint jobs and uh, enjoy. All right, we got the sniper here. machine gun team. Various models.
right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this painting of my British. Um, there's, I'm going to be doing quite a few more of these tutorials, like the German SS I'll be doing very soon. And I'll be doing a, a specific video on how I actually painted these two snipers as a separate video. So come back and check that out.